Good evening. Good evening. We would like to welcome you here to the Sliman Theater tonight in downtown New Iberia to our forum for candidates seeking the office of Iberia Parish President. I'm Suzanne Dugas, your moderator for the forum. Tonight's forum is sponsored by the Greater Iberia Chamber of Commerce, the Daily Iberian, and Leadership Iberia. There are a few announcements before we begin tonight's program. Tonight's sponsors would like to remind you that the last day to register to vote is September the 24th. Early voting will take place October 10th through the 17th, and election day is October 24th. Also, the chamber will be posting all of the forums to their YouTube channel, youtube.com slash goodnewsiberia. Additionally, the Greater, Iberia, the Greater Iberia Chamber of Commerce is encouraging a yes vote to all pro five propositions relative to the Iberia Parish Home Rule Charter Amendments on the October 24th ballot. There are push cards in the lobby on this topic. Now on with our program. At this time, I would like to introduce the candidates. Those in attendance tonight are Mr. David Ditch and Mr. Larry Richard. Each candidate will have 90 seconds for an opening statement. We will then ask a series of questions which each candidate will have 90 seconds to answer. We will then alternate who answers each question first. Each candidate has also been given two rebuttal cards that he can use to take 60 seconds to comment on something the other candidate said during their answer. Those candidates wishing to use a rebuttal card will hold up their card after the other candidate finishes his question to that answer. I'm sorry, finishes his answer to that question. <laughs> and rec when recognized, we'll get one minute to offer their additional thoughts. However, the candidates should be selective about when they use these cards, because when their rebuttal has been used, that's it. If the candidate wants to use his rebuttal card, he should just hold it up so that we can see it. After all of the questions, each candidate will have 30 seconds for a closing statement. To assist the candidates in keeping time, we have a timekeeper and timing lights situated down front. Candidates, when your time begins, the green light will come on. When you have 15 seconds left, the yellow light will come on. And when your time is up, the red light will come on. At that time, you must finish your sentence. If that takes more than a few seconds, the buzzer will sound to let you know that you must stop. Due to the time limits of and to maintain a fair atmosphere, we ask that the audience hold any applause or any other comment. All of the questions I will ask tonight were predetermined. Questions were solicited from the public, and then an independent panel reviewed the questions submitted and came up with those that are to be asked tonight. The panel members selecting questions for this forum were Tracy Landry, Marty Harrell, Rosalind Garrett, Cynthia Alexander, Dot Small, Ellen Switzer, Bart False, Kevin Romero, Will Chapman, and Janet Falk. All <coughs> questions have been kept in strict confidence, and no one except the panel members and I have seen them. At this time, we will start opening statements. Earlier, we drew for the starting order. We will start with Mr. Ditch and then alternate. Mr. Ditch, please Good begin evening. your opening statement. First, I would like to thank the organizations for hosting this forum tonight. In a time when it seems that fewer people are interested with the direction of their local community, their state, and their country, it is events like tonight that celebrate that democracy is still thriving in the best form of government that's ever existed. I entered the race as parish president because I truly believe I can bring this parish and region together, implement a plan for us to move forward as a united front and create a future for Iberians to enjoy and prosper. Tonight, I speak to you not just as a candidate for parish president, but a lifelong resident, a husband, a father, a respected councilman, and a business person that knows what it takes to balance a budget, to make a payroll, to create jobs, and to invest in our community. At many different levels, when it comes to moving our parish forward, I'm all in. As many of you know, I've been a voice for fiscal responsibility. I've never supported tax increases as I believe we have the sufficient resources to accomplish our goals. By working with leaders of this parish and listening to constituents as well as forging bonds between local leaders, 
regional leaders and our congressional delegation, I believe we can leverage existing resources to improve our infrastructure, create a workforce development program, and create opportunity for every resident of Iberia Parish. It'll take conservative principles, bold leadership, and swift action. I'm ready. With your support, on October 24th, we can start a new chapter for Iberia. Thank you. Mr. Richard. Good evening. <clears throat> My name is Martin Larry Richard, and I'm seeking the position of Iberia Parish President. First, I would like to thank God for allowing me to be here this evening. I would like to thank my wife and family for supporting me in this endeavor. I would like to thank the Iberia Chamber of Commerce, the Daily Iberian, and everyone involved in putting this forum together. I've been married for 32 years to Kim Jolivet Richard, who have two children, Tyler Richard and Morgan Ann Richard. One dog, Gypsy. Two grand dogs, BG and Lola. I'm a member of the 101st Airborne Division family, and I've received the Army Commendation Medal, and I'm an honorable discharge veteran. I'm a graduate of the United States Army Communications Signal Corps. I worked in the oil and gas industry for over 20 years, retiring from Marathon Oil Company <clears throat> as the Supply Diversity Consultant for Marathon Upstream Operation. I am the owner of LRNA companies. I will bring responsible forecasting, planning, design, a real strategy that will manage our parish dollars and bring industry and job opportunities to the families and communities of the entire parish. Listen, it's time for the games to stop. Too many people are leaving Iberia Parish. Too many businesses are leaving Iberia Parish. And it's too many businesses don't want to come back to Iberia Parish or come to Iberia Parish. I've experienced in business administration, finance, budgeting, procurement, contracts, investment recovery, communication, safety, construction, and more. Some of the areas of concerns that I want to address as parish president in no particular order is coastal concerns, drainage issues, economic development opportunities, permitting processes, relationship buildings with all the governmental bodies in our area parish, roads and bridges, and the list goes on. It's time, okay, the list goes on. <laughs> we'll now begin with the questions. Since Mr. Ditch began, we'll alternate. Mr. Richard, you'll be the first to answer. Thank and after that, we will alternate. Question number one, compare and contrast yourself as a candidate for parish president to your opponent. What about your education or experience or other aspects of your background makes you, a better, quali makes you better qualified to be parish president? Mr. Richard? I think my leadership experience and past exposure, whether it's gonna be in the United States Army, in the oil and gas industry, starting my company, LRNA, or on the parish council, at the age of 19 years old, when I was in the Army, I was responsible for Fort Campbell's complete range brand communication, communication service. I received the Army, Com Army Commendation Medal for doing such. I started with Marathon Oil Company as a clerk offshore. When I retired, I was over to hold domestic operations as the supply diversity consultant for Marathon's upstream operation. I started my business with $1,000 and I grew that business from a very small business to a very successful small business. I was on the parish council for 12 years. While I was on the parish council, I served as the parish council chairman twice, the vice chairman three times, the public health and safety committee chair, the hurricane advisory flood protection committee chair. <clears throat> I think that my past experience in, in, in business is gonna set me apart totally from my opposition. Thank you. Mr. Ditch? Yeah, I think uh, job creation is the key to turning this parish around. I think my history, my past as a job creator speaks for itself. I've created successful businesses. I've employed thousands of people in this parish. I've employed people in all different walks of life with all different job skills. I've been a small business per person at the beginning of a business. I've ser served as the janitor, the accountant, the manager, as well as the person that's waking up in the middle of the night to taking the calls where something's going wrong. I know what it means to have the buck stop with me. I know what it means to be responsible for hundreds of people that go out and sacrifice each and every day to put food on their table for their families. I've been a job creator. I've proved myself. I've shown my ability to bring jobs to this area. I want to do that for you. I want to do that for the parish. I want to create a parish that we can be proud of. In the past, I've created over $10 million in payroll dollars that have come back to this parish. 
which each and every family been able to provide for themselves, be, be able to provide for their families, and be able to provide a better home. I can do that for Iberia Parish. As your next parish president, I'll be an active leader of this parish. I'll bring my business skills, my skills as an entrepreneur to Iberia with new ideas, new direction, and new leadership. I hope to be able to do that as your next parish president. Question number two, Mr. Ditch, you'll answer first. What are the three biggest issues facing the parish in the next four years? And give us a nugget about how you would address each. I think I just mentioned the first one here being economic development. I think that's the easy one to talk about. There's some things that we can do to entice business to come. I think there is some incentives and rebates we can offer business that they can come here, invest in our parish, and we can give them favorable tax incentives to come here so we can compete on a level with our neighboring parishes. Our neighbors have made an art out of using these tax incentives to attract business. We can do the same here. The second biggest issue I feel is coastal restoration and coastal protection. As a city, a parish councilman representing a city district, I fought tirelessly to try to get funding for coastal restoration. I believe that's a, the sentinel issue in this parish. If we don't protect our coast, protect the southern part of this parish, we're going to be non-existent south of Highway 90. We can't ignore this any longer. I've made the hard decisions to fight for the coast, and I intend to do just that as your next parish president. The thir third issue that I think is very important is community development. We have a huge issue in this parish. <coughs> we have an issue with the working poor. We have an issue with the mentally ill. And we have, have an issue with people that have just lost hope. I had the opportunity to visit a woman's homeless shelter today in New Iberia and visit with some of the residents there that have lost hope, that need opportunity, that need access to the jobs, to the economic development, and to the good things that we create as a community. We can no longer look the other way as part of our community is dying. It's creating too many issues for this parish. And I believe, nobody wants to talk about it, but community development and taking care of our working poor and our underserved in this community is our duty as the leaders of this parish, and it can't go ignored any longer. Mr. Richard? I think the three they want to name through have so many issues facing this parish, but I'll name roads and bridges, relationship building, economic development. When it comes to roads and bridges, I think that Iberia Parish needs to get its roads and bridges up to the Department of Transportation standards. I think we need to have a maintenance plan program in place that's actually going to allow us to keep these roads up to par. Relationship building to me means all governmental bodies in Iberia Parish becoming, working together. I think all the bodies of government must work together to maximize innovation and to streamline and save taxpayers' dollars and make Iberia Parish a, a real value. It's not only to the residents, but to the businesses as well. I feel that economic development, economic development to me is very, very simple. I think better infrastructure and better leadership equals more positive growth for Iberia Parish. We can sit and we can talk about economic development all day long. It's a main, it's a main factor in Iberia Parish that needs to be addressed. But while we're talking about those things, let me, if you don't mind, if I can talk about a few other concerns. We have drainage issues in Iberia Parish, and I think we need good maintenance programs that's going to be, that need to be implemented. I think the channels of our drainage need to be, we need to inspect our channels every now and then for obstruction. I think uh, we need to make sure when people uh, call in with concerns of drainage, we address those issues quickly. Coastal concerns. I actually chaired and asked the council when I was on the chairman. When I was the parish councilman, I had 60% of the houses in my district that was on the water, that had water in it. I had, okay, good. Question number three, Mr. Richard, you'll answer first. What can you tell us about the parish's finances and what's your outlook for the next four years as far as areas where covering expenses will be an issue with which to contend and where will the money come from to cover those issues? Covering issues. I don't know if covering financial will be an issue for me as parish president. I think we need to take a good look at the receivables that we have and the expenditures that we have in Iberia Parish and make good business decisions on what we need to do. We need to look at all contracts, departments, all department contracts, and manage Iberia Parish within our budget. We all know that the royalty funds in Iberia Parish is roughly, is down roughly 50%, and the expenditures are, are the same, if not even higher. Iberia Parish is a business, and I plan to run Iberia Parish as a business. We can talk about the possibility of fundings and shortfalls and all that kind of stuff all day long. But at this time, we don't have any shortfalls. 
I would market Iberia Parish as a strong parish and as the strong parish that it is. And I will get more businesses to come to Iberia Parish and more rooftops and more jobs. And if we ever have a financial shortfall or look like we're going to have a financial shortfall, I'm going to address it at that time. But, th but I think it's time for us to quit marketing Iberia Parish like we are dying. We, don't, we, we, we have money to operate this parish. We need to quit making people believe that we are a parish that, that's no good for business, no good for people to live, and start marketing the parish as the parish that we actually have. This is a good parish. I'm going to take this business that we have here in Iberia Parish and run this business the way I've ran businesses in the past. That's my intent, and if elected, that's what I'm going to do. Mr. Ditch? Yeah, you know, as financial challenges in this parish, it's the small businesses in the oil and gas sector that are getting crushed with a low price of oil. Parish government doesn't have finance issues. Parish government has adequate resources to address the challenges we face. We're not here as the be-all, end-all to support all the financial needs of this parish. Small business can do that. We need to support small business. But first and foremost, we need to restructure how we collect taxes in this parish. We can no longer collect taxes the way we did in 1970 to put, support the services that were most needed in 1970. We need to go back to the people with a detailed plan to readdress how our taxes are collected and spent. We have some fund balances with huge fund balances. We have some fund balances with millions of dollars sitting there dedicated for a source that we no longer need. We have to address this issue. Because I can tell you, all the gloom and doom is just another excuse to come to you down the road to raise your taxes. And I can tell you, I will fight that as your next parish president. I will veto any tax increase that comes to me without being able to go to the people first. And I refuse to believe the sky is falling. And I think we need to spend more time in redirecting our existing taxes to things that matter, such as economic development and business development, and better support our businesses rather than cry that the parish government does not have enough money to continue providing services. Thank you. Question four. Candidates, for this question, you'll be given 180 seconds, three minutes, to answer this question. Mr. Ditch, you'll respond first. What can the parish do, what will you do as parish president, to promote both residential and business growth in the parish, not just in the oil and gas sector, and not just relying on the efforts of the port and the airport? Please tell us what you will do to promote residential and business development across the parish. Mr. Ditch? I think the answer is a simple one. I don't think it's very complicated. I think it's something we've lacked for a very long time in this parish. We have not put resources to business development. We have not hired business people. We have not elected business people in this parish to lead. We need to put business people and business development people in the best position to move our parish forward. Not only do we need to do that, we need to create opportunities for people that have done this in the private sector to grow this parish and put them in positions in parish government to do just that. I don't believe people that have spent a life in government can create jobs, can provide customer service that is needed to grow both commercial and residential development. In addition to that, we need to use every incentive on the book to attract business and residential development here. We need to provide the adequate infrastructure. We passed, and I wasn't on the council when they did it, but the council passed, the council before me, a TIF tax to provide needed dollars for infrastructure on, along Highway 90, the airport, and the Port of Iberia. And that infrastructure has been provided, been funded, and in many cases not even designed and constructed yet. We need to create accountability. We need to create accountability with the engineers, with the contractors, and we need to make people responsible for when they do work for the parish to complete the projects we fund and put the adequate resources and infrastructure out there for both residential and infrastructural development. That's a critical issue in this parish. There's no accountability. There are no timetables. And in turn, people go to another parish, whether it be St. Martin or Lafayette, where they can do it quicker, cheaper, with a more pro-business, pro-business, pro-development attitude. I think it's very important that we utilize every talent we can muster and hire the best consultants, best business developed people in the state to assist our existing governmental agencies in providing good customer service, pro-growth customer service, and development procedures that are business friendly. We should be going to business and ask them what, they can, what we can do for them rather than attacking them when they come through the door of a government office telling them what they need to do for us. It's backwards, we need to fix it, and as your next parish president, I'll be sure that I fix it. <clears throat> Mr. Richard? I think we need to change the image 
of Iberia Parish. I think we need to start to promote this parish as a, a business-friendly parish, as a parish that's going to welcome businesses and do whatever it takes, as long as it's legal, to get the businesses here. I think we need to look at, as my counterpart said, or as my opponent said, the TIF district that we actually brought into Iberia Parish when I was on the council. We took a lot of heat for bringing the TIF, the TIF district in because if, uh, those of you who know about the TIF district realizes that it actually bring a 1% tax to all businesses in that particular area. But the reason we did that is to bring business to Iberia, Iberia Parish. Businesses that come to Iberia Parish now, hopefully when we finish everything in Iberia Parish, gonna have sewerage, gonna have water, uh, and, and roads, and that's what it's all about, trying to entice businesses to come here. We need to market this parish. This parish needs to be marketed again as a success and not as a failure. I don't know of any business that you can operate, that you can continue to talk about the negatives of the business and that business become a success. You have to figure out how to forget about the negative and work on the positive. And as long as we're in Iberia Parish, and as long as we're gonna have people that's gonna be on that council, that's gonna be fussing and fighting and can't communicate. The parish council can't communicate with the administration. And the administration can't communicate with the parish council because of some kind of petty, whatever it may be. Iberia is gonna suffer. We're gonna suffer. It's time for that to stop. The past four years have been an embarrassment to Iberia Parish. It's been an embarrassment to me. I happen to have a business just like my counterpart and we do work all over the United States. And people talk to me all the time about Iberia Parish and you swear they know more about the parish than I do. But the things that they know about the parish is negative. And as long as we let the people that lead us talk negative and promote, and promote negativity, we will never be a success in Iberia Parish. And I can promise you one thing. If I'm elected parish president, I will market this parish in a positive light. And I will manage this parish. And I will keep this parish in the black. And if something happened to where it looked like we're getting ready to go into the red, you will know. Because I'm going to benchmark where we're at and I'm gonna put it in the newspaper and you're gonna know what's going on. This is not a secret. This is your tax dollars that we're dealing with. And we need to make the people of Iberia Parish aware of what's going on. It's, the game is over. If, if we continue to play the game that we have been playing the past four years and longer, we're gonna, we're gonna fail. And uh, I don't wanna say too much, so at the end of the day, we need to worry about marketing Iberia Parish in the right light and doing what it's gonna to take to protect the people in this parish. Question five, you'll have 90 seconds to answer. Mr. Richard, you'll be the first to respond. Yes, ma'am. There's clearly a disconnect between the parish administration and the parish council. What sorts of specific things will you do to get both working together more effectively? I think that you need to have a little bit of respect on both sides, on the parish council side and on the parish president side. One of the things that I learned, not only being on the parish council, being in business, and working in corporate America, is everyone have feelings. And you have to learn to, to give respect in order to receive respect. And if we can't do that in Iberia Paris with the leadership that we have, we're gonna, be, we're gonna have a problem. I think that what we need to do is just understand that this is a business and we all elected to represent this parish and we all elected to do what it takes to make this parish move forward. Um, it's, and, and that's all I can say about it. It's just communication skills. We have to understand how to communicate with each other. Thank you. Mr. Ditch? Yeah, I think everybody's pretty much beat a dead horse as far as the last four years. We need to look towards the future. And I think the most important thing we can do is not only work together as a council and administration, I think we need to look to our state leaders, to our legislators, to our congressional delegation for their help. We need to access the opportunities we have at the state and federal level to improve access to not only jobs, programs, infrastructure, but big mega projects that can be brought down from state and local agencies, from state and federal agencies. I think it's very important for the administration and the council to get together, work a plan. As I take office, I think the first thing that I'm gonna do within the first 60 days is create an infrastructure plan for this entire parish so we can see truly what it will cost to get this parish up to speed with its infrastructure. Because we can talk about it all day long. We have terrible roads and terrible bridges. It's a popular thing to say, all the politicians say it, they say they're gonna fix the bridges. But I can tell you, nobody has a clue what's wrong with the infrastructure in this parish. And we need to get it professionally looked at 
get a dollar figure we can do to fix it, and then go put the pressure on our legislators and our federal congressional delegation to come back home and help us fix some of these problems. We can do it. We can work together. And I think the last four, four years has been an aberration. And I think it's not something we need to overreact to, change the way government works, but something we need to learn from. And I think you, as the people, need to learn from what's happened for the last four years and really take a look at who you're going to elect, who's led people before. We need to stop electing people because they're the nicest guy in the room and they kiss every baby in the room. We need to elect people that will move this parish forward. Question six. Candidates, you'll be given 180 seconds, three minutes to respond. Mr. Ditch, you'll respond first. What's your position on consolidating Iberia Parish and the city of New Iberia's total government operations? Even if Generet or Lauraville or Delcom choose not to be a part of a consolidated government, presumably the parish and the city would account for more than, for maybe 80% of local government operations, the lion's share. Supporters say the benefits are increased efficiency and operational cost savings that could stretch taxpayer dollars further. If you are for it, why? If you are against it, why? And if you are against total consolidation, but support only consolidating certain departments or services, which ones are they, and why do you think it makes sense for those? Mr. Ditch? Yeah, I think that's a great question. I've spent the last three years and probably my you know, most enjoyable point of serving on the parish council is I've got to work with the mayors, the police chiefs of the local municipalities, whether it be Mayor Folkord and Generet, Mayor Broussard and Delcom, or the new mayor Clifton and Lauraville. There's issues, there's challenges amongst municipalities. There's funding issues, there's issues with equipment, there are issues with cooperation just like here. There's police enforcement issues. And I think it's something that we need to take a hard look at I think governmental consolidation parish-wide is something that in the short term is just a poison pill and I don't even think it's worth discussing. But I think what, what is worth discussing is creating efficiencies in government. We need to work with these municipalities. We need to lend a hand. We need to lend our equipment to the municipalities. We need to have an operating intergovernmental agreement where they can use the pieces of equipment, whether it be a drag line, a bulldozer, or a backhoe to improve the lives of their citizens. Each one of their citizens pays parish taxes. We happen to be the best funded governmental organization in the parish. We need to act that way. We need to take care of our municipalities. We need to discuss where services are duplicated. And we need to, at the end of the day, treat a resident from Generet, from Delcom, or from Lowerville as they're a resident of Iberia Parish. There shouldn't be any infighting about finances, about who should serve a suit, we should work together, provide the services, and create the most efficient government we possibly can and be the best stewards of your tax dollars. We shouldn't have to come to you for more tax dollars. We don't have a revenue issue in this parish. We don't have a revenue issue in the municipalities. What we have is a willingness to give up, con uh, excuse me, a will unwillingness to give up control, to give up power, and to look at what's better for the citizens rather than what's better for the politicians. Mr. Richard? Well, I don't think it's going to take me 180 seconds to give you my answer. I don't think <clears throat> the parish and the city should be totally consolidated at this time. I think we can look into consolidating some services, such as recreation, permitting, garbage, to name a few. Total consolidation at this time, I don't think, would be a good move for Iberia Parish. And more importantly, I don't think complete consolidation of our government will gain us efficiency. However, I think we can accomplish uh, the efficiency that we're looking for through intergovernmental agreements and through joint ventures. But total consolidation at this time, I think, would be an extremely bad mistake for Iberia Parish. A lot, of, a lot of us look at Lafayette, and we talk about Lafayette being consolidated. Lafayette is not, total, is not totally consolidated. I talked to the, uh, uh, the president of Lafayette on many occasions. Lafayette Parish still have mayors, city councils in all of the surrounding areas, Broussard, Youngsville, Doosan, and the list goes on. I think total consolidation is an extremely bad thing to do. Iberia Parish have always worked with, in with intergovernmental agreements, and I don't know what they did over the last four years, but the 12 years I was there, we did it. And I think we should continue to do it. So my answer 
is definitely not total consolidation at this time for Iberia Parish. And thank you. Question seven, Mr. Richard, you'll respond first. Here's your chance to direct a question to your opponent. Be clear, uh, please keep it short and succinct. Do you have a question for Mr. Ditch, Mr. Richard? I, I really don't have any questions for Mr. Ditch. He's running his campaign and I'm running mine. Okay. Mr. Ditch, do you have a question of Mr. Richard? I do not, but I would like to take my time, if I could, to just thank my family who's here tonight. My father, Dr. Carl Ditch, my brother, Chris Ditch, and his wife, Marita, as well as my wife, Jessica, my aunt and uncle, Carolyn Robert, and in spirit, my late mother, who passed away in the middle of this campaign on Mother's Day of this year. She was one of my biggest supporters, and she would be so proud to be sitting up there today with the rest of my family watching us do this. I appreciate the opportunity to be here in front of you today. I really appreciate the opportunity of all of y'all that came out. And I just ask, whether it be for me or my opponent, I ask that you take your right that so many people have died for and go out on October 24th and vote to move this parish forward. I appreciate your time and I appreciate you coming out today. Thank you. Question number eight, Mr. Well, Ditch, you'll respond for, I'm sorry, Mr. Richard. Do you like a chance to get a little freebie like that if you don't mind? <laughs> you can use your rebuttal card. No, uh, if, I have to, if I have to reuse a rebuttal card, don't Well, we've only got one more question. It's you called efficiency, rebuttals. Mr. Richard. I guess it is. <laughs> could, it could be. I guess. It's called efficiency. We got that. Okay. All right. No, last, this will be the last question. Mr. Ditch, you'll respond first. What is an issue that has not been raised tonight, or perhaps one that has been raised but you think needs more discussion, and what are your thoughts about it? I think an issue that has not been raised tonight that I mentioned briefly is the issue of coastal restoration. I know y'all hadn't asked a question on it yet, and I think it's very important. I think it's gonna be a tough decision that's gonna be brought back to the people of how we deal with the issues on the coast. We have the largest fabrication yard in this parish that on the south wind now sits with a foot of water on it and makes it essentially unusable if we don't address this concern. I think it's incumbent on everybody from the local officials to the state officials to most importantly probably the congressional delegation. We have a once in a lifetime opportunity with the BP Horizon oil spill to access dollars to address this issue. And I think the determining factor is if we save ourselves as a parish will be how we spend that money in the future. We can either squander it on pet projects or we can address the coast. And it's gonna be up to the 14 member council to do that. And as your next parish president, if it's the last breath that I have, I will ensure that we spend those dollars wisely and leverage them with the state dollars to make sure this once in a lifetime opportunity is not wasted and we can continue to protect the southern end of this parish. Mr. Richard? Read the question again if you don't mind. No problem. What's an issue that has not been raised tonight, or perhaps one that has been raised, but you think needs more discussion, and what's your thoughts about it? I think uh, one issue that hasn't been raised tonight is uh, the RVR, and the people that voted for the RVR when we first gave the $5 million bond. I think it's important for us to understand that we have a lot of people that say a lot of things that is just not true. In February of 2012, we had 12 people vote for the $5 million bond for the RVR. I came to the council meeting last night, excuse me, to the uh, council forum last night and I heard people talking about who voted for it and who didn't vote for it. And it's just disturbed me to listen to people say something that is just blatantly untruth all the time. And I have a copy of the resolution right here, which is resolution 2012-149. That shows, actually, let me rephrase that, that's a different one that they voted for. The resolution is actually resolution number 2012-142. It's where every council member that was at that particular meeting voted for the $5 million bond, except one councilman that I'm saying, and that was a councilman by the, name, by the name of Roger Duncan. I think we need to tell the truth when we're doing things because eventually, if you don't tell the truth, it's gonna catch up with you. And I think if we're gonna run this parish, we need to start running this parish like the business that it is and expose the real things that's happening that's not fair or, or that's not correct. 
And that's about all. I mean, I'm not trying to, to blow on anyone or say anything negative. I just think that we need to get to a point that where we, what we're saying is real. And, and we're not playing and saying anything negative about people just to, just to put it out there. Say what you did and say what you haven't done and move on. Yeah, I'd like to use the rebuttal card. Thank you. Mr. Ditch? <laughs> yeah, I think Mr. Richard just did me the biggest favor he could have possibly done because he just showed you the divergent path these two campaigns have taken. I made a commitment as I sat under that building over a year ago to run a positive campaign. This campaign isn't about my opponent. He's sitting up here, spent way too much time doing research on my voting record. When you could just look for my voting record on the internet, it's right there. I voted for the original bond issue of the Cajun RV era. And you know why I voted on it? Because when I moved back to town in 2003, we had a supper club of 16 couples that lived in Iberia Parish. When I took office in 2011, I think the vote was in 2011, 2012. Mr. Richard can probably tell you he's it been researching it for months, Absolutely. I'm sure. Absolutely. But it didn't take long. there was only eight couples left in that supper club. Eight of those couples had moved to Lafayette Parish. You know what I saw the RV area as? I saw it as a chance to do something that neighboring parish didn't have. Mind you, this was a $4.2 million construction budget that we were approving to go to the Bond Commission. This wasn't a behemoth it's become. I voted for that. I'm proud of that vote, and I'm proud of defending your dollars as the construction is going forward and being a voice of fiscal responsibility as it relates to this issue. Thank you. Mr. Richard, and you have 30 seconds. Yes, and Mr. Ditch, I'm not saying you did a bad thing by voting for the, the uh, Riviera. I'm simply saying that we need to make people understand what we're doing. Don't go around saying you didn't do something when you did it. I, listen, I don't, listen, I voted on a whole lot of things when I was on the council, the 12 years I was on the council, so I'm not trying to bash you for that because you make a decision based on what your conscience informed you to do at that particular time that's correct. But you have to live up to that. And that's all I'm simply trying to say. I'm not trying to bash you for what you did. I'm not saying the, 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 the sugar arena is a bad business, uh, is a bad vote. I'm just saying, I'm simply saying make sure you tell people what you do. Don't do something and say you did just the opposite, is all I'm saying. And it didn't take a lot of time to research this because I know how to do it. At this time, we have 30 second closing remarks from each candidate, starting with Mr. Richard. Thank you. In closing, I would like to say thank you to all of you for showing interest in Iberia Parish. Again, my name is Martin Larry Richard, and my number is number 74. My experience and, exp and exposure in corporate America, the oil, the oil and gas industry, and the 12 years I served on Iberia Parish Council will enable me to put Iberia Parish in a more positive direction. Thank all of you for coming here this evening. Please vote for number 74. Again, on the ballot, M period, Larry Richard, Iberia Parish president. Thank you all so much, and have a great evening. Mr. Ditch? In one month's time, voters will go to the polls to help decide the direction we go as a parish. You know my record of fiscal responsibility and inclusion. I treat everyone fairly, and I hope, hope they would treat me. As your next parish president, I pledge to work hard, to shoot straight, protect our tax dollars, invest our resources wisely so that Iberia is stronger than ever before. I stand behind, before you today a humbled man I'm humbled by your support. I'm humbled by your investment in this campaign. And I'm humbled to be here sitting before you with the opportunity to represent this great parish. I ask for your vote on October 24th and ask for your prayers along the way. Thank you. This concludes tonight's forum for the first pa for the can panel of candidates for Iberia Parish President. We certainly appreciate the time and effort put forth by the candidates here tonight. How about a round of applause for both candidates?